Give me some of your thoughts on so the '94 Tigers. Mm-hmm. What are some of, what are some things that that you saw when you were looking it up? All right. Well, first of all, I do want to get in and, and tell you this is this is kind of what we're looking for. Bill Lanham gets in here, our man from Four Paws. Okay, he gets in here and he's on the te- uh, on the comment line. He's saying Hatfield left the co- uh, the cupboard pretty bare for Tommy West, and Tommy West was a very popular choice to replace Hatfield. And I think that's kind of the sentiment among most Tiger fans, uh, at least at the time. And this is kind of what we're relying on. We we got to be delicate in the way we say this, but we need our more seasoned veteran Tiger fans. <laughs> get in and help us out with this show. Okay. Because, because they were, they were watching more than we were. They were more diehard at this time. Okay. So they need to come in and help us out with these kind of comments and nuggets. Okay. But <clears throat> during the 94 season, I mean, he had a, he, he had a rough season. He had a, you know, the cover was bare. Like they said, uh, he went five and six. Um, you know, I kind of think we, we went through these seasons looking for several things. We were looking for their best win, worst loss and best player on offense and defense. I believe it was kind of the way we were going to, kind of organize this show and my best win it was it was really funny to look at these things because you'll go down the list and say okay well they won here here and here and then you're like wait a minute you know I don't even I barely remember Clemson how do I know if Wake Forest was a good win back in the day or whether Duke was a good win back in the day this is crazy so you had to look up every individual game every other team's record that was played uh basically for 94 season I ended up saying the win at Chapel Hill that was their number one win they won 28 to 17 uh, I saw that or their worst loss to me, home versus South Carolina. They got drilled 33 to 7. Yeah, I mean, really, if you ever lose to South Carolina, that should be the worst loss of the season, if we're just being honest with everybody. But, you know, that that was it for this season. Um, best player on offense. Okay, I went look, these were some tough, there were some tough things to look at here. You know, the stats weren't kept quite as diligently back then as they are no. now. That's no. for sure. That, that was tough, especially on defense, you know, trying to look up some some stats and things. I put the best player on offense is Antoine Wyatt. Uh, he had 75 rushes uh, for 256 yards and a touchdown, 30 receptions, 282 yards and a touchdown. Uh, I think it was kind of his, you know, dual threat ability that made me choose him. I uh, was again, this was a this was a fun thing to try to do and try to comb through all these stats. But the I believe it was the quarterbacks that year. I uh, just didn't really overly impress me with with their stats, so I went with this guy. In um, the best uh, best player in defense, I went with Dexter McLeon. He had four interceptions. And again, you know, I text message you, hey are you finding anything about sacks or anything from these guys? And you're like, uh, no. Nah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm glad we were in the same boat when it came to all that because I couldn't find a lot of stats and four interceptions was really the only justification I could give for picking, for picking Dexter McLeon. But, uh, he was obviously a big name. Tiger fans know him. So that was a, that was a solid choice in my opinion. Well, in my research, research, uh, my, my scientific Googling, if you will, um, yeah. Clemson University has some of these PDFs. Now, nothing is is like – there's no box scores. It's hard to find box scores for these games. Right. Like you said, it's hard to find anything other than offensive stats for these games. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get rosters, but getting a depth chart, good luck. Well, thankfully, yeah. Clemson has a depth chart. So, But they but when you look up their 94 team, their 90, it says their 93 depth chart. I don't understand why that is. But if you look at their depth chart, you had Jim Bundren, who – awesome left tackle by the way he's actually been on our friend mark childress's show the ring and got some great great feedback from him um i believe he's still in the clemson area clemson south carolina you know upstate area um will young left guard trevor putnam center i don't know if he's related to a will putnam i don't know uh uh glenn roundtree right guard Dwayne morgan morgan's a great name right right tackle Stephon Wynn, tight end. Antoine Wyatt, as you said, was the split end, which now we call wide receiver. Right. Um, Patrick Sapp, starting quarterback, uh, mm-hmm. which, by the way, we know Patrick Sapp. He's still in the area. He is a prominent figure for Clemson football for a long time, really. He played in the NFL, but started out as a quarterback, moved over to linebacker. I think that's a pretty pretty cool thing to do. And yeah. according according to – he interviewed with, with Mark Childress as well, and he said, hey – you know, I'm kind of done. Uh, I knew that get, playing quarterback was not what I was going to do in the NFL. So he decided, he told the coaches, hey, I need to move over. Uh, and he ended, up, he ended up being great on defense as well. And they needed it for sure. Emory Smith, uh, fullback, who is Emmett Smith's brother, which my dad always told me that. He was, oh, that's Emmett Smith's brother. But he's a lot different player than Emmett Smith. Um, Emil Jackson, but also Raymond Priester came in there and uh, – Pegas, I think, was his name. Let me see if I can get it right. Uh, yeah, Lamont. I pronounce that. Huh? 
I have no idea how to pronounce his last name. Lamont Pegas, I think, is is the way you say his name. Now, now Bill can tell us if that's actually how they say it. Uh, and Al, yeah. may, Al Coon maybe can tell us. But uh, And then you had Darnell Stevens, who was a good uh, defensive end there, kind of linebacker defensive end. Lamerick Simpson, Carlos Curry, Marvin Cross. Wardell Rouse, a good good um, rushing linebacker. Uh, Mike Barber, guy, play, guy played a ton in the NFL, inside linebacker. Tim, jo- Tim Jones, Andy Ford, and Peter Ford, both twins. Played in the secondary, which I thought I thought that was always cool, man. Play with your twin brother, that'd be that'd be yeah. awesome. As awesome as it'd be to play with you, like a friend, I could only Absolutely. imagine playing with like your twin brother on a on an elite team. Well, you know, a, a good ACC, a decent ACC team, right? right. Uh, Brian Dawkins, as we all know, I mean, everybody's <laughs> going to say Brian Dawkins, which I, I'm surprised that you didn't say Brian Dawkins and Lamont Evans there. Now, some of these players, I think, like I said, this is the '93 depth chart. There's some yeah. of these players that came in that were were freshmen during that that year and right. uh, were getting redshirted. So for me, I kind of – when you go back to players, um, I don't know if I put like an offensive player. I started with, with best player overall for that year. And for me, it, it, I, I agreed with you 110%. Dexter McLeon, I was going to put Brian Dawkins, but – He had an even better year his senior year. So we're going to hold off on Brian Dawkins. I'm going to go ahead and give you a peek behind the curtain on my notes there. But Dexter McLeon played in the NFL. This is a guy that I had his rookie card for the Rams, but did not know that he played for Clemson until I did some research. Like I, I, I remember playing with him on Madden, but I didn't really know he was a Clemson guy. But that's kind of cool. Four interceptions, played 521 snaps. So that was my best player, best offensive player, Al. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you. I'll, I'll say Wyatt. I don't know. I mean, maybe you could say Patrick Sapp or Nelon Green. Um, Nelon Green was a great quarterback for Clemson. He wasn't, you know, a Deshaun Watson by any means. But if you go watch this guy, he had some some good highlight film. Um, yeah. You know, he was a great scrambler. You know, a lot of people like to talk about Woody Dantzler. Nelon oh, yeah. Green had some skills too. Um, maybe we should have brought him on the show or something. Maybe we should have brought these guys on the show. But Neilan Green had some some skills, so let's give him some props. But Dexter McLeon for me, best win again. I agree with you, North Carolina. That's a tombstone game, Al. Number nineteen, a road okay. game. They brought a tombstone back. Not only that, that was against Mac Brown, brother. Yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. Mac, Mac Brown. Had some good teams back then. So that's against Mac Brown. And we're going to have to be playing Mac Brown, probably ranked teams again. So we might have some more Mac Brown Tar Heel. So it'll be interesting. We could easily have a tombstone from Mac Brown in 1994 <laughs> and a tombstone from Mac Brown in 2020. Yeah. Or maybe 2021 because this year is postponed. I don't know. I, I hate that I just put that in the, in the universe. Get the heck out of here. Can you just end the show? Just end it. <laughs> and by the way, Bill gets in and says you pronounce it Pugis. Pagis. Pagis. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, somehow I doubt that. But uh, worst loss, and and you're gonna see a a kind of a, a repeat of this. But any loss to South Carolina is the worst loss. Yeah. Especially when you're an average team, especially in this case, because what I noticed, Al, is in the this these '90s years, these late '90s years, those games were like you go to a bowl game or not. It's like two right. five and five average teams duking it out to win the sixth game <laughs> to get to the Car CarQuest Bowl. Now, here's the deal. So it was a home loss. That makes it bad. South Carolina won 33 to 7. Okay. Now, Steve Tannehill, according to my dad, danced, <laughs> danced on the Tiger Paw in the middle right. of the field. Now, that is just disgraceful. I mean, just the worst. Way worse than anything Christian Wilkins has ever done on on camera. All right? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But then Brad Scott was the head coach, too, which makes it weird. So Tommy West, Brad Scott were, like, duking it out during this time. I remember that. I'm like, I remember when they hired Brad Scott, and I'm like, Tommy Bowden hires Brad Scott? What? (laughs) He's the other coach like they the Gamecocks didn't even want him now fast forward 20 years and how awesome it was to have him and how much he has helped Dabo Sweeney build the program and helped Jeff Scott become who he is so got you know thank you Tommy Bowden for bringing him on I guess (laughs) but um that another thing so when I was looking up this game Al 
South Carolina fans were commenting on the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. This now you oh. know how we have so many like great games that we talk about. We we've, we've had like top five all time games, right? Right. This win over Clemson as two five and five teams is like one of their top great games of all time <laughs> because when they won this game, they went to the CarQuest Bowl and beat West Virginia, and it was their first bowl win. Solid. So, so you kind of say that's the worst loss because you helped Carolina go to a bowl and not only that, win their first bowl. And it was Steve Tannehill who disgraced it. But anyways, anyways, we could talk about this all day because that is the worst loss. And man, I know my friend Stephen Forster is a big Carolina fan. His favorite C- C- Carolina player is Tannehill. And I always wondered, like, why Tannehill? There's so many other better players. But now I get it. Now I get it. The mullet, the dancing, the cheering on the Tiger Paw. I get it. I get it. You know. But oh, yeah. anyways, another cool thing, another cool note I want to tell you about 94 before we move on. 94, this was very weird. So the first game of the season was against Furman, which was Bobby Johnson who was the defensive coordinator for the Tigers the year before in 93. Yeah. So that was weird. (laughs) The second game was against Mike O'Kane, the quarterback for the Tigers in the 74, 75, 76, against NC State. He was the coach of NC State Wolfpack. And he he beat Furman. He lost to Mike O'Kane. And... Mike O'Kane would eventually, when Tommy Bowden come around, you remember his name, he was the offensive coordinator. So, for a time being there. So, um, right. just interesting, those first two games out the hat, not only do you have to try to fill the expectations of being Danny Ford, but then you have to turn around and beat two or play against two people who have Clemson ties, that very close Clemson ties. Yeah. 